کنفرانس بین المللی در برلین با حضور مریم رجوی به مناسبت روز جهانی زن برای بردباری و برابری علیه بنیاد گرایی و زن ستیزی هفتم مارس 2015 شانزده اسفند 1393 And now I would like to invite a crowd of 80 prominent women, great personalities to join us on stage. This is a powerful front fighting against terrorism and barbarism. A front which, as Mrs. Rajavi said, will create a new world based on freedom, justice, and equality. Please welcome them with your warm applause. about something that is completely different is about women and girls living under the terror is about women who are burned with acid in their face is about women their heads are cut it is about the Jabari 20 years old girl that has been executed I have known many Iranian women in my life and in my activity and I have admired, and I would say to you today, I admire all of you women of Iran. I admire your courage to fight for freedom and for justice. And of course, I admire and I appreciate Madame Rajavi, what she bravely does, not only for her country, but I believe for all women all over the world. We have to be clear that democracy cannot be functioning for the half of society if the other half, that are women, they have no democracy and freedom. More than ever, I would say that we need to be together. 
We need to be together to support the progressive forces wherever they fight, and we have to protect human rights. Saying this, I would say finally that it is our obligation to push the international community in the United Nations, in the European Union, in the Council of Europe, to translate the words in concrete actions and to support for Iranian people aspiration for democracy. And I believe this will happen with you and with thousands and thousands of others that fight uh, for democracy all over the world. God bless. Good evening. Thank you very much, dear Mrs. Rajavi, dear friends, dear sisters. It's an honor for me to be here this afternoon and this night, and I can tell you this. I am impressed by the public. I am impressed by your presence here, and it inspires me in my political work. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am a member of the Belgian Parliament and I was the chair of the Women's Committee of the Belgian Senate for several years. And I have been celebrating International Women's Day at a time when the whole world was facing the difficult challenge of Islamic fundamentalism, which is no longer a threat only to the Middle East, but also a threat in Paris, Brussels and everywhere in the West. And this, is, this threatens all our democratic liberal value, values that we have in our Western world. But we should keep in mind that Iranian people were the first to suffer from Islamic fundamentalism. We should keep that in mind. And let us not forget that under the theocratic rule, Iranian women have suffered the most and have fought the most. And the Iranian resistance movement was the first to start a fight against this evil regime. Mrs. Rajavi, you were the first to call for the formation of a united front against, against Islamic fundamentalism. As a Muslim woman, she, you have become a leading voice, voice which tells the world that her religion supports absolute gender equality in every aspect, from marriage and inheritance law to equal pay and, most importantly, equal participation in political leadership and taking decision-making positions in economic sphere. Mrs. Rajavi, you have, you are, you have educated women in the PMOI to have an open mind and to support a secular system and freedom of choice for women in all aspects of their lives. So, the best message we can carry forward out of this conference room tonight is a strong message of solidarity, especially with our sisters in Camp Liberty, in Iraq, and a solid message of support for Madame Rajavi, who think she is a very great role model to all of you and in fighting against Islam Islamic fundamentalism and extremism. And I truly hope that me being here today can give you hope and perspective for the future. And I'm sure we will win this battle. In the end, and Iran one day will be free. Good luck. You have my support. Madame Rajavi, dear colleagues, first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Spanish women delegation in this meeting to talk about uh, important issues for all women in the world. The Spanish women delegation with members of the Parliament and, and the Senate, Dolores, uh, Inma, Carla, Luz Marina, uh, Virginia, Eva. The truth is that for decades exists in the region a despotic government that has served and serves as an inspiration for all those movements that now horrify us. All those movements fighting to gain political power by force of arms in their territories and also in neighboring countries. In fact, it was Khomeini who first raised the idea of caliphate. It was Khomeini 
who first said, we need a caliphate to impose the so-called Sharia law in all the region, a despotic government that has served and serves as inspiration for those who misuse religion to impose their political agenda or to, si or to simply impose terror, a despotic government that has served and is an inspiration to all those who try to impose by force of arms or corrupt politics a state in which women are regarded as inhuman and subordinate to men. This, this is not just uh, my opinion. All these issues are contained in the constitution and civil and criminal law of Iran, which certifies in an obvious way in an obvious way, it's misogyny with the belief that women are inferior beings who are unable to govern, to be judged, or to have any relevant position with laws that certify that the testimony of woman is worth much less before a judge than a single man. Therefore, because inequality is institutionalized in Iran, in its laws, all this movement that now scandalize us, whether Shiite or, or Sunni, have the Iranian regime as an example. For that very reason, any regression in condemning the Iranian regime, any agreement with the Iranian regime seeking to hide the reality of despotic and cruel government, any step back in the fight for freedom in Iran, will help the misogynistic model to extend through the region and even in democratic countries. So that is why it is our responsibility to prevent this from happening. And the best way to prevent it is to continue denouncing the truth of the Iranian regime. The best way to prevent it is to continue to support the brave women of the Iran resistance the, the women in Iran, the women uh, around, uh, around the world, the, in, in, and especially, in especially, especially my heart, the women uh, in Khan Liberty. In <laughs> women, the brave women, engaging, engaging their political model of equality and freedom to be one day a reality in Iran. Thank you very much. Good evening, Berlin. Good evening, and thank you to all the good men here, to all the good men in the world, to all the good, strong, sensitive, all the wise men in the world. Misogyny is not only against international human rights conventions. It's not only Arabistic, obsolete, and outdated. It is also the ultimate proof of diminished intelligence and absence of vision. What else could mean to persecute and exclude the half of human talent and capacity? Freedom doesn't stand up for itself. Democracy doesn't stand up for itself. Equality and rule of law doesn't stand up for itself. I'm here to say thank you to all the women standing for freedom, equality, democracy, and the rule of law. And I would like to thank, of course, President Marian Rajavi for leading resistance with, in front of over 1,000 women because resistance have the last word. Good evening, Berlin, and thank you very much for inviting me here. Um, I feel very privileged to be a friend of Free Iran. On International Women's Day, we, make the new, we mark the unique contribution made by our sisters around the world to the cause of women's rights. More than 100 years after a woman suffragette from my own country threw herself under the king's horse in an act of civil disobedience against social injustice, subsequently dying of horrific injuries, women in many countries have still not achieved equality of opportunity. 
In fact, in some countries, the world seems to be going backwards with oppressive regimes bringing in archaic laws, denying women and girls freedoms they thought they had won, meeting out ever more violence against women and girls, both physical and psychological, using religious fundamentalism as a perverse rationale for keeping us in our place. As a member of the Women's Rights and Gender Equality Committee in the European Parliament, I fight for equal rights of women wherever they are and for the eradication of gender-based violence which continues to be a stain on society. Since becoming acquainted with the NCRI Women's Committee, I have been privileged to learn about the pivotal role of women in the struggle to bring about a fair and free Iran led by Maryam Rajavi. Thank you. Led by women, but working alongside fair-minded men for the benefit of all citizens, for an Iran that would respect difference and cultural diversity whilst promoting women's equality, encouraging them to take their rightful place in society, to live a life free from fear, and to have the rights of free association enjoyed by so many other women around the world. In a ridiculous case last year, a young Anglo-Iranian woman was arrested, imprisoned, and tried simply for attending a volleyball match. What kind of system punishes young women simply for being sports spectators? The tragic case of Rehani Jabari, who refused to acquiesce in the trumped-up charges against her last year following the death of a government agent whom she had stabbed in an act of self-defense as he tried to rape her, will stand as one of the most iconic moments in the global women's movement. Many of us participated in the campaign for her release. She will never be forgotten, for we shall continue the fight for a fair and free Iran in her memory. As well as being on the Women's Committee, I'm also a member of the Culture and Education Committee in the Parliament. And as a poet and theatre maker myself, I am passionate about the role of arts and culture in a civilised society. Whilst learning about Camp Ashraf last year, I was pleased to see that the inhabitants had led a full creative and cultural life, with a women's orchestra and sports activities playing an important role in the day-to-day -day timetable. But without my ongoing friendship with the NCRI Women's Committee, I would not know these things. According to Reporters Without Borders, Iran has become the world's leading jailer of female journalists and netizens under Rahani, with at least 65 journalists and news providers behind bars, and is now one of the world's most oppressive countries as regards freedom of information. But we are here to tell the truth and to shine a light in dark places. Today, I stand in solidarity with the NCRI women, past, present and future. I stand in solidarity with Mrs. Mariam Rajavi and also with Shole, the mother of Rehane Jabari, and all the mothers who have experienced the pain of losing the daughter at the hands of murderous thugs condemned, condoned by a corrupt state. They died innocent of any crime except that of being honest and true, clever and bright, women full of life. Thank you. Sehr verehrte Frau Präsidentin Rajavi, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, liebe Freundinnen und Freunde, aber auch in vielen anderen Ländern. Wir denken nach über das Problem eines religiösen Fundamentalismus in einer Zeit, in der 21 koptische Gastarbeiter in Libyen enthauptet worden sind, ihres Glaubens wegen. Wir reden darüber, 
in einer Zeit, in der assyrische Christen aus ihren Heimatdörfern in Nordsyrien fliehen mussten. Und von, viele von ihnen wurden gefasst und wir wissen zur Stunde nicht, was mit ihnen passiert. Weil da eine Terrororganisation islamischer Staat ein Kalifat errichten will, in dem Menschen anderer Überzeugung und anderen Glaubens keinen Platz mehr haben sollen. Und deswegen müssen wir an diesem Tag auch ganz klar und deutlich bekennen, Gewalt widerspricht dem Auftrag und der Würde des Menschen. Gewalt kann nur im äußersten Notfall eingesetzt werden, um Menschen daran zu hindern, andere umzubringen. Keine Gewalt kann gerechtfertigt werden, die darauf ausgerichtet ist, andere Menschen umzubringen. Das ist es aber, was heute geschieht und was wir niemals hinnehmen können. Wir müssen unseren Respekt vor der Würde der anderen unseren Sinn für Verschiedenheit und Pluralität darum und dadurch unter Beweis stellen, dass wir kompromisslos auf der Seite derer stehen, die gegen Fundamentalismus Front machen und für demokratische und menschenrechtsorientierte Veränderungen im Iran eintreten. Denn Den Schlüssel, den Schlüssel zu einer solchen Veränderung sehe ich in der jungen Generation. Frauen wie Männer, Mädchen wie Buben in gleicher Weise. Die gleiche Würde jedes Menschen und der Respekt vor dem, was einem Menschen heilig ist, schließen sich nicht aus. Sie gehören zusammen. Das muss die Botschaft für das 21. Jahrhundert sein. In diesem Sinn gute Kraft, viel Mut für den Kampf, den Sie unternehmen und bei dem wir an Ihrer Seite stehen. Applaus